Most of our civil pasture areas here on the farm rely on a natural seed source or on volunteer vegetation. The, the first step to creating civil pasture is to thin the tree canopy to allow enough solar energy or sunlight to reach the ground. Once we get enough sunlight on the ground, we can usually rely on this existing seed bank for whatever is best adapted to that site to grow. Here on this farm, it's, it's a mix of cool season grasses, particularly orchard grass. Many of the cool season grasses actually grow better in light shade and dampled sunlight than they do out in full sunlight. One of our main goals here at this farm is to increase the health of our soils through sound grazing. And we feel that the civil pasture areas are taking that one step further in promoting soil health We've never used any fertilizer inputs here on the farm or soil amendments like liming. We rely on the fertility that's created through intensive rotational grazing. The cattle obviously are uh, recycling the herbaceous growth into manure and, and fertility for the ground. The trees help increase the fertility even further in the case of these black locust trees, they're a legume, so they're fixed atmospheric nitrogen and making that available for the grasses and other herbaceous plants in the understory. The trees also help draw up nutrients from lower soil profiles that aren't available to the grass roots and recycle the, those nutrients through the leaf litter. So here we're standing in an area that uh, in 2012, I had harvested and converted to a silvo pasture. This is part of a research project that's funded by a Northeast SARE farmer grant through the USDA. And uh, in this area, one of the treatments was planting different forage species with the idea of looking at how these forage species produce in terms of uh, livestock feed. And so this area in 2012 was harvested in July in August of 2012, forages were seeded. In um, August of 2013, the area was grazed for the first time. Rotationally grazed, cattle were on this three-quarter acre plot for two days, and then they were moved to a new plot with a target forage height being reduced to three inches tall. Um, so forages went from about a foot tall to about three inches tall during that first season. And now we're in May of 2014, and this is really the first green up. This is one of the first warm sunny days, and the grasses are just starting to green up, and uh, and we can see some of the results. Uh, the strip, the strip that I am standing in right here, between where I am and it goes back, is a strip of orchard grass mixed with white clover. And what you see in this strip of orchard grass is that it's responding fairly well to growth in this early season. And um, as a visual comparison, and the, the data has not been fully analyzed yet, but as a visual comparison, we can see a real difference between this orchard grass strip and this smooth brome grass strip, which was also mixed with white clover to the right of me. You can see that the orchard grass has a much fuller sward density than that brome grass. Now, how this is gonna play out in the next two, three, five years in terms of competitiveness and productivity is, is hard to say. Remember, this is really early results, but we can clearly see that establishing orchard grass and white clover here led to a rapid sward, sward development, although the nutritional quality of these still needs to be assessed.